Shalom, I like give all undergoing praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakudash, I like give double honors to our apostles and elders, great millstones, salutations to our sincere brothers, pushing this word across the four corners of the earth. The title of this lesson, For Horrible, is the End of the Unrighteous Generation, and this is from Chicago.Sometimes.com. It says 104 shot 14 fatally over Father's Day weekend in Chicago. Five children were among the 14 people killed, including a three-year-old boy and 13-year-old girl killed in separate shootings in Austin on Saturday. And this was updated on June 22, 2020. So as of yesterday, June the 21st, 2020, it was so-called Father's Day. So while these Americans was out here celebrating, being merry in the spirit, and just participating in all these different events, going to picnics, hanging out, things of that sort, it's a lot of bloodshed that's happening in America. But according to the ways of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, they do not condone of our people participating in this madness by celebrating these holidays because these holidays goes back to another deity. So the heavenly father look at the nation of Israel as his woman pursuant to the book of Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. So we are like married unto the most high. So by us worshiping and participating and putting our energy into these other gods by celebrating their holidays, that makes the Heavenly Father jealous and very angry. Just like any man that sees his wife go out there and cheat on him, he will get upset and very angry and jealous also in the spirit. So how much more the Heavenly Father, the creator of all things? So this is Amos 5 and 21. I hate, I despise your feast days and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. And it's going to all that energy our people love to put into these different holidays that this so-called white man who are the biblical Edomites has put that vibration for a majority of our people to be in. So according to the Most High, he despised these feast days. Any holiday you can think of from birthdays to all these different holidays that's in America and anywhere else across the four corners of where our people are scattered, the Most High despised it. And I would not smell in your solemn assemblies. Though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Because majority of our people, they have that spirit of Cain. It makes sense why Yahweh Shah told those wicked Pharisees and scribes that you are your father of the devil. Because he was referring to majority of our people, especially the ones that were coming against him, that they have a similar spirit that goes back to Esau, who are the biblical Edomites. Then also that same spirit was upon Cain. And he had that wicked spirit just like you see these Edomites today. And to go even further, it goes back to that serpent that was in the garden with Adam and Eve. It's that same spirit, that serpent devil-like spirit, that very cunning and that spirit of guile and just wickedness. So Yahushua was referring to two-thirds of the nation of Israel as they father the devil and talking about these Edomites. So as a king, when he did his offering to the Most High, he did it as a fruit basket, pretty much. He offered the Most High fruit, but in actuality, the Most High required a blood sacrifice. So Abel, being the righteous, he sacrificed an animal to the Most High. So Cain, being the wicked one, being evil, the sinister side, the left-hand side, he offered fruit to our Heavenly Father. So the Most High rejected that. So that same spirit that's transferred upon two-thirds of the nation of Israel, it's like the spirit of Cain. And that's why the Most High is rejecting two-thirds of the nation of Israel on this side. They have to be purged and cleansed on this side by those nuclear missiles and by the chariots of Yahweh, Wah, Yahweh Shai, in order to be born into the kingdom of heaven by the seed of the elect that make it on this side. So though ye offer me burnt offerings and your meat offerings, I will not accept them. Just like he did not accept the offering from Cain. He's not going to accept the offerings from two-thirds of the nation of Israel because they are likened unto Esau. They are likened unto Cain. They are likened unto the serpent that was in the garden. Neither would I regard the peace offerings of your fat beast. So going back to this article right here, as it says, 104 shot, 14 fatally over Father's Day weekend in Chicago. And these numbers are just crazy. And that's just what they're projecting out on the internet. It's no telling the actual numbers, you know? So as you can see, it was a three-year-old boy was taken after being shot while riding in the car with his father in Austin, and the boy later died. So of course, you already know these were nothing but our people, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Hispanics, Native Americans, 
who consists of the 12 tribes of nation Israel that were mostly a part of these different homicides in Chicago over the weekend. And all of this goes back to us being disobedient, by us cheating on the Heavenly Father with these other gods. So the Most High, he's very furious with the nation of Israel. But as Yahushua died for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect, and as us being a hopeful elect, he's given us another chance to be back at one with him. By the bloodshed that Yahweh laid for the nation of Israel, beginning with the elect. So we're trying to get it right on this side as much as possible. But two thirds of the nation of Israel, as you can see, they will continue to worship these holidays and all these false religions as long as they can. So they will continue to stay here in their captivity. They are comfortable here because the majority of our people have that spirit that they have received their consolation. They are not looking for a divine power to come redeem them out of their captivities. So two thirds of the nation of Israel have to be done away with. And this is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and 54th verse, because people always be wondering, like, why are these things happen to so-called Negroes, or Latinos, or Hispanics, and Native Americans? Everything goes back to the scriptures. And this all goes back to the curses for us disobeying our Heavenly Father. And this is Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and 54th verse. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eye should be evil toward his brother. So that's why you see that heavy friction between a so-called Negro and another so-called Negro, or a so-called Latino with another so-called Negro, or a so-called Native American with a so-called Hispanic, you know, vice versa, because it all goes back to the curses. And that's that spiritual curse, that spiritual stigma that we are suffering from right now as this day. So that's why you see these drive-bys and all these different homicides are happening amongst our people because we disobeyed the Heavenly Father. So therefore, he took that covenant off of us and he pretty much let us go into the hands of these other nations, mainly Esau. So that's why these deaf angels are roaming heavily around these different cities of America. His eye should be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he should leave. So that's why you have these single parent households and that stigma only fits our people. And also I would like to bring out because how Esau projects everything, just make it seem like just so-called Negroes against so-called Negroes or so-called Negroes against Latinos and vice versa. I always be mindful of Esau. He's that serpent that goes right back to the garden, that same spirit. Because if you read on certain videos that's dealing with different homicides in the cities of America, that's mostly populated by our people, you will see comments that say it be trains or carts that's filled with guns and they will stop in the middle of the so-called hoods or ghettos and Jake go ahead and get it because it's free. It's there. It's in their spare time. Also, you have Esau that will pretend to be another rivalry of a so-called game will actually go shoot at that game and that particular game will think that they actually was being shot at by another rivalry game. So Esau is always in the midst. And you will see these type of comments on these different videos that's dealing with the homicides, especially like in Chicago or New Orleans. Esau definitely has Asian provocateurs out there provoking this madness. And as it says in Habakkuk, the second chapter in the 15th verse, woe unto him that give it his neighbor drink, that put that bottle to him and make him drunk also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. That goes right back to the old proverb, throw the stone and hide the hand. That links right up with Revelation in 12th chapter, how it says the accuser of our brethren. That's specifically talking about these Edomites. They will stir up the midst. They will provoke all this madness, set up these different snares amongst our people, then point the finger at us to the most high and be like, look at your people. Look how they are disobeying your laws. Look how they are acting down here. But it's only for so long a Satan's device is going to work for him. That's why the scriptures say, stand now at thy enchantments. Because these elites are not going to be able to use their power source on their left hand side too much longer. But at the end of the day, it's still judgment of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah upon two thirds of the nation of Israel. So they definitely deserve it because you have to think about it in the spirit. A lot of these people was out there when Yahweh Shah was on the cross and they were saying, crucify him, crucify him. Let his blood be on us and our children. So you see all this bloodshed happening amongst our people and especially the younger generation. You cannot feel sorry for them. Let go from your mortal thoughts. That's that curse that two thirds of the nation of Israel put upon themselves. So we cannot feel sorry for them. And this is Isaiah 3 and 25. Thy men shall fall by the sword and thy mighty in a war. 
So through the spirit, that should answer your questions if you ever had any. Why so many young so-called blacks and so-called Hispanics or so-called Native Americans or so-called Latinos be getting gunned down, either it's by the police or by their own kind. Verse 26, and her gates should lament and mourn, and she being desolate should sit upon the ground because we at that low status in this system. And that's by breaking that contract with the Heavenly Father, by keeping his law, statutes, commandments. And we was like, we're not going to deal with that. We'd rather deal with the other nation's commandments and their gods. So the Most High is very angry. He's very jealous right now. And it leads me to Wisdom of Solomon, the third chapter, in the 16th verse. And that's for the children of adulterers that's going to two thirds of the nation Israel. Because yes, they commit physical adultery and they also commit spiritual adultery. They should not come to their perfection, and the seed of an unrighteous bed should be rooted out. So that's that snare that's laid upon two thirds of the nation of Israel when you read about it in the book of Psalm, and also Apostle Paul reiterated as well that their table become a snare. So they cannot come into their profession. They cannot come into this truth. As it says that none of the wicked shall understand. So that also applies to two thirds of the nation of Israel because they are likened to these other nations, mainly Esau. For though they live long, yet should they be nothing regarded and their last age should be without honor. So that's why when two thirds of the nation of Israel, when they come back into the kingdom of heaven, they're gonna be shame and disgrace of the acts and deeds that they were doing on this side. But through a period of time, they're going to get over it. And they're going to be right. And they're going to be good in the eyes of Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai. Verse 18, or if they die quickly, they have no hope, neither comfort in the day of trial. And the main trial is going to Jacob's trouble. When the Most High is going to put his wrath upon these Edomites and to come down upon two-thirds of the nation of Israel with that fierce anger. The scriptures say that Esau is going to be like a madman sparing none. He's going to come in like a flood. So that's what we're doing through the spirit to do what we can. Trying to get all those spiritual brownie points with Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. So we can be accounted worthy in the eyes of the Lamb and be protected in these dire times. With two thirds of the nation of Israel, they don't have that type of mindset right now. Because Yahweh, Yahweh Shai has used those angels to block them from coming to their perfection. By receiving the word of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai in truth and sincerity. Verse 19, for horrible is the end of the unrighteous generation. And as you can see, you see why these scriptures come to life. The prophecies speak for themselves. So this is judgment that's coming from you. How are you? How upon two thirds of the nation of Israel? And just imagine if it's like this right now. Imagine when Jacob's trouble actually takes place. That's why the scriptures say in 2 Ezra, the 16th chapter, but for all these things, they should not turn from their wickedness nor be always mindful of the scourges. You know, scourges is going to those different afflictions, those different calamities and evils, and the different judgments that Yahweh Yahweh Shai is going to strike the nation of Israel with. So we are seeing our power, Yahweh Yahweh Shai, going back to the ancient term, Alashaya, which means terrible demon-like power. So when Yahweh sends back Yahweh Shai, he's going to have that same type of vibration, like father, like son. So for horrible, it's the end of the unrighteous generation. And with that, hope you all was edified. Shalom. Everybody school. He said by the school is going softball. The sounds of gunshots bow, 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 bow. and sirens <laughs> echoed through Chicago. So they just loaded him up on a violent weekend. We call it gang war, drug related. A weekend that saw at least 61 shootings and nine homicides, including the killing of three-year-old McKay James. We heard six shots, about six, probably six to eight shots going off who witnesses say was in a car with his father in the South Austin neighborhood. The kid had got hit in the car, and they drove the kid straight to West Suburban. The child was pronounced dead. Police say the 27-year-old father was the intended target, and he is not cooperating with detectives. How y'all doing? Could I leave you in a car? This morning, community activist Andrew Holmes canvassed the neighborhood seeking information on the suspect. Block by block, let's find the shooter. Holmes, who also lost a child to violence, was shaken by the toddler's killing. But excuse my language, it take a damn fool to discharge that weapon. Happy Father's Day to you! Now what you gonna do? The outrage over a toddler being shot and killed brought pastors and community activists out to the block where it happened Sunday to denounce the violence. It would be an ultimate contradiction to pastor in this neighborhood 
and not say a word about a three-year-old right. who can't defend himself and cannot speak for himself. Several community groups raised $10,000 as a reward for information leading to the suspect's arrest. About an hour after the toddler was shot, just blocks away, two men were shot, one of them fatally. And an hour after that, about a half a mile away, three teenagers were shot, including a 13-year-old girl who was killed. Police say she was in her home simply watching TV. The bullet goes through the window, striking her in the neck and causing her death. And in South Shore, a 17-year-old boy and a 16-year-old boy were killed near 79th and South Uella Avenue after they had gone to the corner store. This offender runs up with a gun and shoots and kills two of these guys for no reason at all. The police superintendent says there's a common thread in all the violence. Gangs, guns, and drugs, and no consequences when Chicago cops make arrests.